Welcome everybody to my presentation on Struct RNA Finder. I am Cedric Hermans and I will give a presentation about Struct RNA Finder, which is an automated pipeline and web server for RNA family prediction. As the name says, it's an automated pipeline, meaning it uses automatically different tools in sequence to become a result. This has also been implemented in a web server and as the name says, it finds or predicts families of RNA sequences. First, I'm going to discuss the structure of my presentation. We will have an introduction about what is the aim of our struct RNA finder. Then we will go on to the core with some theoretical background as to what does it all mean. Then the implementation, how is the program implemented to work. The results of the program will also be discussed and then we will continue to a demonstration on how to use the program. Finally, I will have a conclusion about the pros and cons of the program and if it. So let's start with the introduction. First and foremost, a lot of non-coding RNAs do have a function. Now, how can it be? It depends on their secondary structure. As you can see on the right, I have an image of an RNA sequence that is folded up into lots of loops and pairs and well, it has a whole structure and that structure can have a function. There are several methods to predict these structures. However, to predict these structures, you often had to run a lot of different programs and different tools with intermediate files. So it was not very handy to do. That's why they created Struct RNA Finder. It's a pipeline that combines these multiple tools in one tool to predict the structure. Let's go on to the theoretical background. So RNA has a lot of different subdivisions. The biggest is mRNA and non-coding RNA. mRNA, as we know, is translated into proteins. However, non-coding RNA, as the name says, does not code for any protein. We have different kinds of non-coding RNAs, like housekeeping non-coding RNAs, most known are tRNA, transfer RNA, and rRNA. But then we also have regulatory non-coding RNAs. There are different kinds of these non-coding RNAs that have a lot of different functions, which we will not discuss during this presentation. So let's go straight to the implementation. First off, we need an input. Of course, we can use FASTA sequences, or alternatively, we could use covariance models, but this is not available in the web version. So you would need to download the program and install it. Your input is then processed through Inferno, which aligns it with covariance models. There are two options here. You can use CMM scan or CMM search. The difference between these two is that CMM search will use your sequences to make a covariance model to use, while CMM scan will use a database with covariance models in it. So CMM scan is more complete. After that they have aligned your sequences with the covariance model, you will have alignments and tabular results. These alignments and tabular results will then be processed according to your option. So there is an option, all reports. If you say yes to that, then it will give you all the found alignments with a high enough score, of course. So it will filter all the significant hits. Well, if you do not check the all reports, it will only filter the one with the best hit. So it will only return one sequence. Both of these results will result in some filtered hits. These filtered hits will then return a mature sequence. This means that it will go and look in your provided sequence for what region of your sequence would be the sequence that corresponds the best with the covariance model. Once we have our mature sequence, this sequence will be provided to a tool called RNA Fold. RNA Fold will determine the structure. Once we have this structure, it can be converted and colored 
This will result in RNA structures and DBN files and PNG files. So it will make images of those structures. Another parameter is if you use the RFARM dataset or not. But this setting will always be turned on in the web-based version. You can change it when you download the program. So that will have alignments and tabular results and it will compare them with a taxonomic assignment. So it will compare them to the database and it will make a HTML report. If we don't provide it, it will just use your results without any taxonomic assignments and it will just generate the HTML report. Finally, we have our final report, which will be an HTML file, which is easy to view and to read. So what does this result look like? Well, let's have a short look because we will go more into detail when we actually give the demonstration. First off, you will get the results. The RNA families will give you all the sequences it has found and it will allocate them a specific unique name. It will also say to which RNA family they belong and it also gives the ID of that family. Next, it will say from which nucleotide position to which nucleotide position your sequence was found in your provided sequence and it will also give a score and an e-value to this found hit. Lastly, we also have the RNA fault, which as you can see will return those images it made and it also has a score. In the summary of the results, we can see a summary of the results, of course. We can see that we have provided one sequence, that we have 488 hits, and then we can see which family the RNAs belong to according to our results. At the right side, you can also see a pie chart, which has been automatically made. And it shows you how much each family is represented in the results. Next up, we have the loci distribution. This is an overview of where all the results are found. So you can see that every RNA sequence that has been found has a position on the full sequence. Then we have the taxonomy. So each RNA sequence has some specific kind of organism it has been found in. So you can see that 40% of our RNA families are coming from the archaea, while only 11% has specifically been allocated to the bacteria. Last up, we also have the files. These files contain all the intermediate files that were used to generate this HTML file. As you can see, instead of having to put six files together, it does that for us, and we also don't have to provide it in between two different tools. So let's go on to the demonstration. Hello everybody, and welcome to the explanation on how to use Struct RNA Finder. First, we need a sequence. For this example, we will use Helicobacter pylori. Uh, I do this in NCBI, but you can use any gene or genome. You can even use next generation sequencing data. I'll just take the full sequence for the whole bacteria. We need to download the FASTA file. So this is the whole genome and we send it to a file. Now that we have downloaded this file, we can use this file in the struct RNA finder. So you need to go to this website or alternatively, you can just search for struct RNA finder on Google and it will be the second link. The first one will be the article I discuss in this presentation. To run uh, a search, we need to go to run on the left side here, and we need to upload a FASTA file. So I'll just take the Helicobacter pylori.fasta I just downloaded and open it. So now you can see this is the file that's loaded in. Oh. And now we need to choose a method. The methods are not really that important in our case, but there's a difference that will be made clear in the presentation. I will use CM scan for this one and I will leave the rest. Then you just click on run 
and it will start. And now it's running. Two hours later. After waiting for a very long time, we finally get our results. There's a few things we can see. Informal stands for the algorithm that is used to align two sequences. We can see all the sequences it has found in our sequence we submitted, the family it belongs to according to the search, the ID of the family, from which sequence to what sequence the structure is found. It will also give a score, uh, the e-value, how likely it is that it was just random chance, and another score, but this score is for default. Last, we also have the structure of the RNA it found. We can also click on this structure, and then we see an image of how this RNA sequence would look like according to the program and the alignment. We can also go in more detail with every sequence we want. For example, if we take this sequence and we go to it, we get what family it belongs to according to the RFOM database, as you can see here, what ID it has in the RFOM database. We can go to it and we can have a look at it. And you get a whole wiki like page on what this RNA is. We also get a short description right here. And we get the uh, previous results back. Here you can see the alignment according to the RFARM database. And this is the RNA fault uh, structure. So this is used for the program to know how it should fold it. The length of the sequence is 46 nucleotides and it matches with 45. As you can see, the ones that are matched are green and the last one is just white. So 45 instead of 46. This is the one that is uh, the standard. And it thinks those are both in the same family. So we have ev seen everything on this window, so we can close this window and we can continue. So as you can see, there are a lot of sequences that have been found in the genome of Helicobacter pylori. If we want a short summary, we can go to summary. So you see we have submitted one sequence. It has 141 hits. And here we see all the families and the amount of RNAs that are in those families, according to the alignment. This is a graphical representation of uh, the summary by family. So you can see tRNA has 45, uh, 54 hits, as we can see here, and that's 38.30% of the total. Next, if you want to know where on the genome these are located, we can, of course, look at the sequence numbers, but those are very big and they don't really indicate what is close to each other. So you can go to loci distribution. And now we can see how they are located on the genome. So we have the whole genome from nucleotide zero to the end. And every bar, as you can see, is an RNA. Because this genome is so large, we can't see if it's on the positive or the negative strand because the little blocks are too small and it just looks like a black line. Then we have taxonomy. Here you can see in which family the RNA belongs. For example, 55% belongs to the archae and 30% to the bacteria, 6% to viroids, 0.7% to viruses, 21% belongs to unassigned eukaryota. Lastly, we have the files. In this file section, we can see all the 
intermediate files that were used in the programs in the background but if you for example want to have the FASTA sequences for all the sequences that have been found as RNA sequences we can save it and we can of course open it and then we see all the RNA files with their sequence. That was it for the Structure RNA Finder. I hope this was helpful. After this demonstration, we still have a conclusion. So, what can we conclude about this program? It is easy to use. It can predict the RNA families and annotate them in nucleotide sequences that were provided. It is easy to read and understand the output. It works with next generation sequencing sequences. However, there is one negative remark it is very slow. It can take more than one hour for a full genome to scan it. The aim of the program was to have an easy to use program that can extract and predict RNA families from some sequences. And that's exactly what the program does. So according to me, the program does what it has to do and it works fine. So that was it for Structure RNA Finder. I hope I could help you and thanks for listening.